Hi, welcome to the Knit Now Guide to Circular Needles. My name's Kate, I'm the editor of Knit Now magazine. And I'm Debbie, and I'm your resident expert for this tutorial. Um, on issue 87 of Knit Now, our free gift is this set of circular needles. So we thought it'd be a good time to show you how to use circulars. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice when you get circular needles is that the cord, so you've got the tips here, which are the, um, the what you'd normally be the needles, and then you've got the cord here. And this is where your needles will, your stitches will sit when you're not actually knitting them. Um, and these cords come in three different, in several different lengths. Um, so you would choose a short one for some projects, but a much longer one if you've got a lot of stitches on your needle. And that's why sometimes you'll see us recommend a circular needle, even if you're knitting flat because these come in much, much longer lengths than your straight needles do. And we'll show you how to knit flat on circular needles later. Um, so I guess it's time to cast on. Absolutely. We're gonna to have to open these up. And um, we're gonna start with the simplest uh, cast on, um, which is just casting on all the way around a set of circular needles. So this is our six millimeter set of needles and Debbie's got some chunky yarn here so I'm going to pass you over to Debbie who's about to start casting on. Very much. So I am going to start off with a basic slip knot and then pop that onto one end of my circular needles, pull that up snug and use the other tip to start casting on and you can use any technique that you would normally use for casting on. I'm going to use the double needle technique here. So it's a straightforward double needle cast on. Okay, and that one's, that's uh, also known as the knitted cast on. Yes. Right. And you can use any kind of cast on that you like really with circular knitting. As you can see from what Debbie's doing, you're doing exactly the same motions, exactly the same stitches as you've been doing on straight needles. Um, so while Debbie's doing that, I am going to just take a moment of your time to extol the virtues of circular knitting. Um, it's, I, I will be honest with you, I very rarely use straight needles. I tend to choose my circulars for a few reasons. Um, the main one for me is that it's much easier to read my work because you're always looking at the right side of your knitting, whereas with straights you're going back and forth, um, so I like knitting in the round for that reason, particularly for colour work. Um, also if you are not a fan of seaming, although I am, I'm quite, I'm quite partial to a bit of mattress stitch from time to time, you know, we all have to get our pleasures from somewhere. Um, <laughs> We, you can knit a whole jumper without any seams at all. And I've got one here that's in the current issue of, well, in the same issue of Knit Now as you get the free needles. So this really, really beautiful jumper in um, it's West Yorkshire Spinners Blue Face Leicester DK. Um, and the whole thing is knitted seamlessly. So you look at those sides and you haven't got a seam there, which is rather nice. Um, the other thing that's a big bonus for me is travel. So you look at these little needles here, those are gonna fold up really easily into your handbag, take them wherever you like. The stitches are much less likely to slip off, um, particularly if you're working on bamboo, bamboo's nice and sticky. Um, but I've also, uh, in my experience, I've never had a problem taking circular needles onto aeroplanes, although that's always gonna be uh, at the discretion of the person who's doing the security check. So I can't guarantee anything for you, but I've never had any problems with it. Uh, so Debbie, how are you getting on with that cast on? I'm getting on fine, thank you. Um, and what you would be able to see is as I'm casting on here, I just show you. Can you see how that needle there is filling up now with the stitches? So as it fills up, I'm going to start sliding that off and it's going to move onto the cord and eventually the whole of the cord will be full and it will come right round and fill up this second needle as well. So shall we skip to let's, the one we knitted earlier? Let's do exactly <laughs> that. Oh I feel like I'm on blue Peter. Um, <laughs> right let me put that to one side and I shall bring this in. 
So now you can see that I have got a nice full cord of needles, of stitches with my needles on the end. And the most important thing to look at next, when you've cast on all your stitches and obviously count to make sure that you have got the right number. Um, yeah. <laughs> We've <laughs> all been there. I was just about to say yeah. exactly the same yeah. thing. <laughs> what you're looking for now is to make sure that your stitches are nice and straight and they mustn't be twisted. Now this is quite a long cord, so I'll get this in shot as best as I can for you. Um, but you need to, would you like to just hold that for me, oh, Kate? Thank you very much. So Teamwork makes, makes the dream work. Absolutely. So you're going to just lay your needles round and nicely check that there aren't any twists in there. Just move that out of the way. Oh, so you've got one there. Exactly, so well spotted. So what we're going to do is just turn that over and there we go, have another look. And this may look fiddly but once you've got that first couple of rounds out of the way you'll be off and going with no problem. So can you see I've got another one there, so I'm going to just push that one round as well. And I think we are now good to go. Yep, I think that's fine. Kate, Kate would like to give it the, fi <laughs> the final verdict. Yep, that was good for me. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? Go on. Um, sometimes I do work the couple of, first couple of rows flat because then it's much easier to see if you've got a twist, particularly if it's a really, really long cast on. And that's an excellent tip. <laughs> and I would be lying if I said I hadn't done exactly the same thing. Okay, so next we're actually going to now join this up into a circle. So you want your working yarn on the right as normal. If we pull this behind the camera. Absolutely. Well, that's that's way. Yes, that's <laughs> and our tail down here. And I'm going to use my right hand, but it's exactly the same if you are if you throw with your left. You're going to no, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. I have a stitch marker here, which I'm going to pop on my needle to make sure that I know when I get to the end of the round. Because unlike straight knitting, you'll find that in circular knitting, it's much easier. It's much easier to lose the end of your round. So if you can see there, I've got my stitch marker. I'm going to knit around that. And it's a good idea here just to give that a little pull so that you don't get a gap in between. You can tighten that up later, or um, as sneaky people, we <laughs> can uh, we just take it in with the uh, seam with the tail end later. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to weave that end in at some point anyway, so exactly. you might as well use it to close up a tiny little gap. Exactly. Particularly, I find if I'm working in like four ply or something like that. That is, the stitches are really tiny that you're not going to see a little join at the bottom of a jumper. Absolutely. So. Okay. So that's just normal knitting again. So th that's the thing with circular needles. You're not really learning any new stitches or anything like that. It's just learning how to handle the needles more than anything. Exactly. And the thing that you're doing as well as you go around, you can see how now this is the part that I've just knitted and here are my stitches actually waiting to be knitted now. And I'm just moving the, the knitting around the cord and as I get to start to run out of stitches to knit, sorry about that, I'm moving the camera, I'm just going to bunch them, bunch up the next few so that you're not, you don't want to stretch here so you want to keep this nice and even so you get good stitch, good stitch definition stitches. Nice even tension. Okay. Um, and you see we're using bamboo needles here which are quite grippy um, but there's lots of different types of needles available. There's smoother wood which is shiny and slippy, you can get metal which is very very slippy, you can get um, carbon fibre even, you name it you can get a circular needle. Do you, do you like the pointy ones Kate for lace I, knitting? I quite like a pointy needle. 
Yeah, not going to lie. It depends on what the yarn is, really, more than anything else. I think if you're working with, say, quite a splitty cotton, then too sharp of a needle is more likely to split the yarn. Whereas what we're working with here is quite sort of chunky and solid. So you can afford to use something a bit sharper. But yeah, particularly when you're doing lace or anything fine, something with a really nice mm. fine point is uh, it's rather lovely. So um, we have cast on, we have joined to work in the round, we have placed our marker to indicate the beginning of a round. And now it's just a case of going round and round in circles. So again, one I knitted earlier. <laughs> uh, we can take a look at this. I'll show you this one. I'll just untangle it a little bit. So that's how it will start to look once you're a few rounds in. I think I've done about four or five rounds of this one. Okay. So take a closer look at that. If you'd like to take a quick look there you can see how whenever we're working the right side is facing you all the time and it, especially when you're learning it's so much easier to work out <laughs> a, if you've dropped a stitch to work out if you've got the wrong stitch uh, and it, it's just and you don't have to purl which I think is quite hard to learn sometimes when you when you first first learn to knit yeah I'm quite a fan of when I'm teaching someone to knit just casting on and working the rib for them and then giving them a tube of knitting to just to go round and round in circles to do a hat because um, then you just you only have to teach someone the knit stitch and then they're just going round and round and round and making a hat and then you can do the crown decreases for them depending on how speedily they're learning um, so yeah that's really pretty much all there is to knitting in the round on circular needles um, what we can show you, I think, unless Debbie thinks there's anything else, is just knitting flat on circular needles. Yep, that's fine. Well, just before we go, yep. what I will just show you mm -hmm. is this is our join here. You can see that it looks really nice and neat. But when we weave the tail in, if there is, I'm just making a little artificial hole here, but if there is a little hole here, that tail yarn will nicely fill that little space fill up that little space there okay cool so add that to my stash shall we pull out another needle from this little pack why not let's go with this little three mil So these are a little bit twisty when you first get them in the pack, but if you just give them a little smooth, they do start to flop a bit more quite quickly. So you see, you saw how curly that was when I pulled it out. Just give it a, give it a little massage. It's quite nice and squidgy, these cords, I think. Mm. Um, and you'll also notice that they are uh, cunningly coloured so that you know <laughs> which size you've got because as good as needle manufacturers are at labelling their needles they do eventually wear off don't they? <laughs> the, the, the numbers yeah. so shall we take a closer look again why not there we go so I'm going to just be casting on here um, as previously again just a normal cast on um, but with this obviously you can cast on as few or as many stitches as you like um, I've got an example here of something from this issue of the magazine and uh, knit now issue 87 which we recommend a circular needle for but as you can see it's it's a flat piece but right the way around that long edge you're getting a lot of stitches on there which you're going to struggle to fit onto any sort of standard size straight needle. So you cast on here where there's not very many stitches at all, but then it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And yeah, by the end of it, you are gonna want circular needles to put that on. There's a lot of stitches. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it though, it's really pretty. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. Just, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so how are you getting on there? Okay, so I've got just a small section the stitches here but I think that's probably enough just to give you a clue I'm going to tuck that cord back around the camera again there 
So you can see I've just got, let's say, a small number of stitches. So what I'll do is I'll just knit across the stitches just as you would if you were working on a pair of straight needles. So this looks exactly like knitting on straight needles. It's just that there's a cord attaching the ends of, of the needles That's to each other. That's relatively, relatively straightforward really, isn't it? We can do that. We can do that. We can, <laughs> we can definitely do that. So again, one I made earlier. I'll pass this to Debbie so you can have a little bit of a closer look, but this is just a little bit of moss stitch on uh, some circular needles. Okay, so I've now knitted my first row here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Just this. turn it around, just turn it around. Oh, good turn it around, yeah, I must admit, I don't, I generally slide into the end, but fair enough. I'll turn around and pop that around there. Yeah. So you slide them to the other end, you're working the arms at the wrong end. There we go. And I'm working on the next set. Jeez. Now you do have to, if you are working a pattern here or if you're doing stocking stitch, you will have to purl. Yes. So for our stocking stitch, we do need to purl. Yes, it doesn't exempt you from stocking stitch when you're working flat on circular <laughs> needles, unfortunately. No, it does not. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you the, I'll just finish these last couple and then I'll show you the lovely moss stitch one that Kate has done here. Okay, pop that to one side. And you can see on this one that to achieve the moss stitch pattern, we're going to do knits and pearls. Have I left you enough yarn? Not a huge <laughs> amount, but, um, but it would be a straightforward knit where you've purled on the last row and purl where on top of your knit there. I think I'll probably about as many stitches as I can fit in, but <laughs> you can see how how that then works. But also because you can use it for any number of stitches, I yeah. think that's really helpful. A lot of people tend to assume that you need to have a full um, set of, of stitches on the needle, but it will work with any number. So it is uh, it's really useful, especially if you've got arthritis or mm. stiff wrists and yeah. you, you need that sort of lighter weight. Yeah. I think that's really good. Okay, so okay. I think that's everything for the basics, really. Um, so. We're going to do a separate video on magic loop, which is a technique w that will let you do a circumference of any size on longer needles, because we showed you those... Um, needles there that were completely full so you were doing you know at least a 60 centimeter circumference but what I've got here is a much smaller circumference that will show you how to do that um, in a separate video so we will see you next time okay thank you very much